last video we looked at how you can use the gridding up method to develop an accurate line drawing from a portrait photograph. In this video we're going to look at how you shade your drawing in. There's no right or wrong place to begin shading, I like starting with the eyes as they instantly bring the drawing to life. If you're right handed, working from the top left hand corner can be good as it reduces the amount of smudging on your drawing. Alternative, you're left handed starting from the top right hand corner will achieve the same. Throughout this piece, I'm going to be working with a range of 2, 3 and 4B pencils. The higher the B number, the softer the pencil and the easier it is to achieve darker tones without pressing hard. Don't worry if you haven't got access to these, just use whatever you have to hand. And don't forget, it's important to keep your pencil sharp if you want to capture detail. Placing a piece of clean paper under your hand can also help prevent smudging. You need to look carefully at the range of tones in your photograph and try to recreate them as accurately as possible. Working from a black and white image as opposed to a colour one makes this much easier. Very little of the photograph that I'm working from has any pure white. Therefore, the vast majority of my drawing will be shaded in a tone of grey or black. Effective shading requires you to build up tones and textures in layers. Before I draw in the eyebrows, I put down a layer of relatively flat grey. As I begin to shade in more of the drawing, I am starting to rub out the grid lines. Leaving them in can mean that they show through in the finished drawing, especially in lighter areas. This is not good. Although my original drawing was a line drawing, these lines often don't exist in real life. Edges are defined by contrasting tones. This can be seen clearly in the outline of my head. It is the contrast between the dark background and the light skin tone that defines the edge. There is no hard outline, and this should be the same in your drawing. As you shade in more and more of your drawing, make sure you keep looking carefully at the photograph you're working from. Not looking can mean that you miss subtle changes in tone that are really important if you want to make your work accurate and look realistic. If you shade in an area too heavily, don't be afraid to use your eraser to bring back the highlights. If you work carefully, using an eraser in this way is like shading in reverse. Shading in the background with a darker tone can really make your drawing stand out from the page. You can do this even if the photograph you're working from has actually got a light background. Having shaded the entire image, you could stop here, but if you use a piece of kitchen roll to blend your pencil tones together, you can achieve a far smoother, more realistic finish to your drawing. Be careful not to overdo this as you can lose detail and sharpness especially around facial features. Once you are happy with your blending, you will need to work back into your drawing to sharpen up detail and bring back any lost contrast. <laughs> 